Hello, hello. So today I am sharing you 10 myths that the grocery store, that people have about the grocery store. Sorry, let me take my cough drop out. Got sick today. Um, and these are myths that people always think, but they just really are not true. They are myths. Grocery mistakes, right? Grocery mistakes. Mm -hmm. Would you like me to start again and we'll just lop that off? <laughs> okay. okay. Today we are talking today. Oh my you goodness. could just say hello to everybody for a sec. Hi guys. Okay. Today we are talking about 10 grocery mistakes that everybody makes with the grocery store. Now, these are common mistakes that pretty much are used, I would say, 75% of the time. So let's get into them. Number one, overestimating the amount of work it takes to prepare food and meals in general. In general. A really good example is I found these brownie bites on at the store. Michael put a picture up there for you. Oops. They were $5 for one small tray of these brownie bites. And <clears throat> there's 40 counts, of course, you know, but that's about a half a pan of brownies for a brownie mix that you can get for a dollar. Five dollars for these. So it would cost you maybe five minutes worth of work to mix them up and put them in a pan and make them yourself. And you could save nine dollars because this is only a half batch. So you could save nine dollars by just making your own brownies at home for literally five minutes worth of work. And they would be a lot more delicious. And they would be a lot more tasty. Then, if you don't want even a brownie mix, you can use the fudge brownies in our Dining on a Dime cookbook, volume one. It's on sale right now for New Year's, 35% off. The fudge brownies in this cookbook are the best. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, guys. My viewers will tell you, these are the best fudge brownies you will ever eat. We get compliments all the time. And you can make them for about a quarter, 50 cents, using the recipe in our book. So stop overestimating the time and the amount of work that it takes to do these things. That would be the first thing. A great example of this is Lunchables. This is huge. Mike, do you have a picture of the Lunchables? Let me tell you, these Lunchables are probably, a, uh, they're like a dollar fifty each is what a, is what a package of Lunchables runs right now. We don't have a picture of it, but it's literally five crackers, <coughs> four or five pieces about this big of ham or turkey, and four or five pieces of cheese for a dollar fifty. That is like twenty five maybe 30 cents worth of cheese and crackers. Make your own Lunchables at home. Really, you could make Lunchables for one or two weeks <laughs> and you would say right now they're 10 for $10 is on this sale here. But nowadays, I think they're like $1.25 to $1.50. I know this was like a, a year ago. And so you could make these at home yourself, literally five to 10 minutes worth of work. Just take a little container, put, stack them all, line them all up on the <clears throat> counter, put all your crackers, put all your cheese, put all your meat, and then add a little brownie bite and you're done. It literally takes five minutes worth of work to make around two weeks worth of Lunchables. So. Don't think that it takes too much time and stop buying the, the pre-packaged food like that. The next thing... Barb that, said the Lunchables are $3 on sale right now. Barb says the Lunchables are $3 on sale? On sale, yeah. Holy cow. If that's the case, really, you've got to stop spending your money and start value valuing your money more. Um, the next thing is... 
make these things at home. I found these blueberry muffins. Mike's got a picture of it. <coughs> I think they were, how much were they? $5.49 for four blueberry muffins. Guys, I could make this for a dollar or less. Blueberry muffins right here are Dining on a Dime Cookbooks, Volume 1, and Volume 2 right here. Volume 1 has the original recipe. Volume 2 has the same recipe, except that we have, I think, like 20 variations on how to make muffins in here. And you know the little crumbly, crispy, sugary top that's on these fancy muffins from the store? All that is, is just the big, um, the big sugar. Uh, what's that called? It, it's called, um, oh crud, I can't remember. But it's like um, baking sugar, sugar topping, I can't remember. But all it is, is just bigger pieces of sugar instead of the finer sugar. And so just get that sugar if you want, the... <coughs> If you want the fancy top and put that on there right before baking and then you have the fancy muffins. You can just get big muffin tins at any garage sale. Thrift stores, garage sales have them all the time and you can make those great big muffins also $4 instead of $5.49 for literally five minutes worth of work. The next thing is you're going to have to not be so persnickety. This is a huge mistake at the grocery store. Bread. This is my example here. This nine grain bread. Oh my goodness. People are paying five to eight dollars for fancy breads like this. You have got to stop being persnickety at the grocery store. This is a huge mistake that people make at the grocery store thinking that they have to have these fancy breads, fancy deli meats, you know, like the cheese section. Everybody likes to have the big <clears throat> expensive cheeses because they work hard and they deserve it. So they want fancy cheeses like this as a you know, treat for themselves. And I totally get that. And that's fine once in a while. But to do it every single day, this is a mistake that you're making at the grocery store by buying these expensive items instead of the dollar loaf of just plain white bread to make your sandwiches. Don't be getting all lippy with me and saying how you just can't eat your white bread. My grandma is 94 years old. She has eaten the white bread, <laughs> regular sandwich white bread, cheapy white bread for probably 92 years. <clears throat> and so I know you think you need it, but you really don't. As a matter of fact, go ahead and comment if you just can't eat the, eat the white bread because I'm using those comments to uh, make other videos and getting more money. So go ahead and leave them and thank you for your... <laughs> Well, one thing I can't say about all the brands, but even if you want to be that way on the bread, many of the ones that say whole grain wheat or whatever, you look at them and there's like 10% whole grain wheat and 90% white bread, but they yep. market it as wheat bread. Yeah, because there's just a little teensy tiny bit in there. So for those of you guys who couldn't see, that's my husband, Mike. He's monitoring the comments in the background for me. Um, <clears throat> the next thing is not, this is a huge grocery mistake, but not shopping the sales. So I got up this morning and I went, <coughs> our local grocery store was having their semi-annual meat sale. And I went in at seven, <coughs> at seven o'clock this morning, I got 60 pounds of bacon I got probably, I don't know, I probably got six, what, six or eight, probably eight times eight. I probably got 40 pounds, 50 pounds of roasts. I got 10 to 15 pounds of beef. And I um, got those stocked up 
on sale at the cheapest price. And I literally saved myself seven to $800 this morning by going and stocking up meat on sale when it was cheap. The same thing with canned goods. I saw this spam at the same store this morning. <clears throat> and you can see here, it's on sale two for $3. So that's $1.50 a can. And if you look there at the bottom, it says that the price is normally what? Five? You save 538 on two. So you save 538 on two. So that would be five, six, seven, eight. So that would be four, a little bit, a little bit over $4 for each can. And I paid a dollar 50 for it. Now, don't give me no lip about spam either. Well, no, go ahead and give me lip about spam because then I'll use those comments also to make more money. <laughs> but, but, you know, spam is great for your prepper pantry. People say, I don't have enough money to stockpile. Yes, you do have enough money to stockpile. You just need to look for the sales and watch for the sales. Those stockpile deals are there. That's how I get this, this, whoops, switch side, this side, this cereal right here, 50 cents a box. This cereal right here, these Cheerios, $1.27 a box. That was just in the last couple of months. So, well, this cereal, this cereal right here was uh, several months ago, but the Cheerios were just last month. So, your deals are out there if you shop the deals, but you have to want to shop the deals. So what's funny is I think it was Elaine Mike just showed me a comment that said that she works at Walmart and people buy Lunchables 15 at a time because they have probably because they have two kids that they're sending to school. Think about that. $15 or excuse me, 15 Lunchables. I know we're going back just a little bit here, but 15 Lunchables times $3 is $45 that mom spent on lunches for two kids at school. That is absolutely asinine. Absolutely asinine. It's ridiculous. She literally had $3. She, there's $3 worth of product in those Lunchables. And yet she's going and working and spending two to three hours, depending on her hourly pay. She's working two to three hours to pay for lunches for kids for two weeks at school. That's absolutely crazy. <clears throat> All right. The next thing is you're not comparing your prices correctly. Now, <coughs> I talked to the cashier one day at the grocery store and she said the number one and two, well, they were both tied for one, she said, but the number one products that are sold at the stores are the pre-cut fruits and vegetables and the pre-packaged chips. The pre-packaged chips. Look at this, guys, right here. These pre-packaged che Cheetos, you get... 18 bags of chips, but here's the thing. There is 17 ounces of product in here, okay? 17 ounces of product for $9 on sale and almost $14 not on sale. So you're paying, we'll just say, because most people I know don't buy them on sale, $14 on sale, literally Two feet away, not even two feet. No, not even two feet away. It was just, so in this picture here, these Cheetos were directly above. So what, 18 inches maybe? These Cheetos here were 15 ounces for $3.99 on sale, $5.20 not on sale. Look at that. She paid, those moms pay three times the price because they don't want to get some cheapy zip top bags and put those Cheetos that are on sale. Now, go even a step further, further, and I didn't get a picture of this, but get the off-brand, store-brand Cheetos, which are made by the same company for $1.79 a bag. 
and prepackage them for your kids. Listen, you say you have no money and that groceries are going up, but here's a little bit of tough love. You have got to get a grip and stop just wasting money. And Mike made a really good point about this earlier. So come on camera dear here real quick. And he was talking about, he said, you know, when you're buying these convenience products, they are, it's like you're just throwing money away. Like you just have all the money in the world to spend. We have people who say, well, I'm not rich. I don't have the money to put towards this thing or that thing. Paying off your house, paying cash for cars. Right. But then if you buy convenience foods, you're saying kind of that you're rich because if you can save, if you spend, was it $18 that we said or $45? Yeah. If you spend $45 of convenience on top of the price of something rather than spending the $45 less and spending five minutes to bag it up yourself, then you're acting like you have the money. So if you say, I'm not rich, I can't do this, but then you're acting like you're rich because you want to pay for someone else to have done that little bit of work. Yep. Yep. All right, guys, these tips are in our Dining on a Dime Cookbooks, Volume 1, Volume 2, and our gluten-free, dairy-free edition right here. They are 35% off for our New Year's sale. Right now, you can get them at livingonadime.com. But our cookbooks give you the tips and tricks so that you don't have to buy the prepackaged brownies. We tell you how to quickly get in and out of the kitchen so you are not spending a lot of time in the kitchen. I'm not kidding, guys. I spend 15 to 20 minutes cooking dinner every night. I have a chronic illness. I had five kids at one point. We were self-employed, running our own business. I don't have time to spend hours in the kitchen. I don't have time to spend hours clipping coupons. All of this, you can cut your grocery bill. Right now, most people will email me and they'll say, Tara, I just cut my grocery bill 200 bucks on my first trip trip to the grocery store. I get that I get that email and comment all the time. It's true because it's not difficult. You can do this without cutting coupons. You can do this without spending a long time in the kitchen. All right. Our next tip is, speaking of coupons, not or thinking the grocery store mistake is that you think that you have to use coupons to save money. That is just not true. I did use a coupon for these Cheerios right here, but I'm telling you, I very, very, very rarely use coupons. Only when I find an exceptional deal, like with these with these Cheerios, I use them. But I do not have a stack of coupons. I don't go through the Sunday paper. I don't go clipping coupons. None of that. Now, I do use the coupons on the app, but I don't consider that clipping coupons. I mean, we're talking sitting there cutting out coupons and comparing ads and all that. I don't do that. It's a huge waste of time unless it's just your hobby. If it's your hobby, fine. Go ahead and go for it. But I don't have time for any of that. The next big mistake is at the grocery store is not using coupons. <laughs> <coughs> now, I know those two contradict each other, but the thing is, you have to use your brain, okay? Use your brain, people. When these Cheerios right here had a coupon for 50 cents each, and they were 99 cents on sale at the store, Last year, these are the dollar twenty-seven ones, but last year they were ninety-nine cents, and they had a fifty-cent coupon off each box of cereal. I got over fifty boxes of cereal by cutting the coupons off the back and going back to the store and using those coupons to buy more cereal. I bought the first box, and it had a coupon it for a dollar off two boxes. So then I cut that out, went and bought the next box, and so on. And so use your brain. If a coupon is actually going to save you a significant amount of money, like these Cheerios, I paid 50 cents a box instead of $4.59 a box for literally 15 to 20 minutes worth of work. When It didn't even hardly take me any time. The hardest time was getting the first four or five boxes 
And then I had enough that I could just, you know, bulk buy them, you know, five or 10 boxes at a time. <coughs> so that's the next mistake is not using coupons when it's advantageous to you. Okay. The next thing is, this is a huge, this is, I would say, aside from the pre-cut vegetables and chips, I would say this is the second biggest grocery mistake is buying sodas. Guys, I am not exaggerating when I say I go to the grocery store and this aisle is always packed with people. It's always packed. I leave the grocery store. People have these things just stacked and stacked in their grocery carts. <coughs> Once again, it is absolutely ridiculous how much money you are wasting on sodas. Stop wasting money on sodas. That is the huge grocery store mistake. It's just throwing your money literally down the toilet. You are literally throwing your money down the toilet. And if you are overweight and you have diabetes and you're on insulin and you have all these doctor's appointments and all this stuff, you are literally throwing away money because you're just choosing the soda habit. It's a huge waste of money. Soda, cigarettes, smoking, excess juices, all those things are literally being flushed down the toilet. So stop wasting your money on it. The next thing is stop thinking you're getting nutrition when you're not. These juices here, once again, everybody thinks juice is really healthy yeah, for you and juice. really, you know, healthy and you're getting all this nutrition and you're giving your kids all this nutrition. Guys, this is just sugar water. That's all it is. It is just sugar water. So stop making the grocery mistake that it's more nutritious than it actually is. Drink water. My kids have never, ever, ever had sippy cups full of juice or milk. If they ever had juice or milk, it was with a meal and it was a small cup. I did not just continually keep juice or milk in their sippy cups. The next one is stop spending money on fancy things like Go-Gurts, -Go the Jello containers. This goes back to the school with the Lunchable things and all of that. Guys, this is just ridiculous. Once again, you don't need <clears throat> these fancy single serve containers. I just get the little half cup <coughs> reusable containers from Walmart. I forgot to get a picture, but they're just about this big. I fill it up with a big jar of applesauce. You can fill them all up at once, put a little sprinkle of cinnamon and sugar on them, slap the top on them, put them all stacked in the refrigerator, and then the kids just pull one out for their lunch when they're ready to go for the day. I don't waste money on these convenience foods that people really don't need and false nutrition once again. This yogurt is nothing but sugar. It is really not nutritious. Yes, it might have a little bit more protein, but you could get that from a slice of lunch meat also. The next one is this grocery mistake, I would say, is huge. And if you guys have questions, please put them in the comments and Mike will pull them and I'm going to answer them in just a minute. But this next one is huge. Do Not checking the clearance aisles. Today, when I was getting my big meat haul, I walked by the clearance rack at my local store and you see these granola bars here. They were $3 marked down. Right there, you can see, $3 marked down. I am not exaggerating. Six feet away, I turned around. I was going to go look for them on the shelf. Six feet away, I turned around, and here they were on the shelf. 
two for ten dollars and the regular price was what 549 is that what it was i can't remember save a dollar 58 save it so, yes yeah, so it'd be like 629 <coughs> so this this is six dollars and 29 cents normally and i found it on clearance for three dollars and on sale then even you're still saving two dollars from the sale price and they were literally right next to each other i just turned around and they were on an end cap right there shop those clearance sections you can find some really stinking good deals on clearance items there's nothing wrong with them the store just needs to get them sold because the expiration date which isn't really an expiration date. It is a best buy date or a sell by date. Most things are a sell by date now, especially things like granola bars. That would be a sell by date that you need to just use them up within six months to a year after that date because grains will last for a long time. And those granola bars would probably last even longer because they have so much sugar in them. So if you buy things like granola bars, Go ahead and send me those comments, Mike. If you buy things like granola bars, then look and see. Is there something that's, you know, cheaper, easier? Now, we have a really stinking good granola bar recipe, homemade granola bar recipe in our Dining on a Dime cookbook. But for people who think granola bars are nutritious, all they are is basically a glorified cookie. So... If you're thinking you're getting extra nutrition, all it is is a glorified oatmeal cookie. So you might as well just make the oatmeal cookies in our Dining on a Dime cookbook or our, <coughs> or our granola bars in our Dining on a Dime cookbook for 50 cents instead of the five, six dollars you would spend in the grocery store, okay? That is... Our cookbooks are on sale right now, guys. Our New Year's sale, 35% off. Livingonadime.com is where you can get up. Now, also, for those of you asking, we do have our undated daily planners. You can see how thick this is, almost 400 pages. We have a nice large section for each day of the year, but they are undated so that you can use them any time of the year or if you skip a few days you don't have to feel bad about wasting pages in your planner all right now mike is um all right mike got me the questions here guys barbara polly uh we love you barbara she says, your brownies are the only ones I make. Guys, these things are really good. If you go to livingonadime.com, we have the recipe for free right there for you to try it. <coughs> and just go to our website and do a search, the little round magnifying glass, and you can find the recipe there. Um, Lisa, store-bought muffins are so dry and old tasting. Yeah, and homemade is so much better, but it really only takes five to ten minutes of actual prep time, you can be doing other things in the kitchen while they're baking. So I don't count baking time as the time spent cooking things because I'm doing other things and getting other things done. Um, ah, yes, thank you, Karen. The sugar for those muffins is called finishing sugar or coarse granulated sugar. Yes, it's coarse sugar or finishing sugar. That is what I was trying to think of. Thank you. Uh, Josephine says she's going to make cinnamon rolls yet again. Dining on a Dime cookbook. Oh, my goodness. They are so delicious. As a matter of fact, we're getting ready to remodel our kitchen. And that's one of the things is I want to be able to make cinnamon rolls and have an island where I can just roll everything out. Uh, Monique says our cookbooks are the best investment oh thanks 35 percent off our print books 50 percent off our ebooks right now she uses our cookbooks just about daily well thank you 
I do too, believe it or not. I actually use my cookbook almost every, well, actually probably several times a day, but I do. People ask me all the time, do you actually use the recipes in your books? Yes, I do use the recipes in my books several times a day. So, uh, <clears throat> Tam says tuna is good for stocking. Yes, it is. That's a very good stockpile food also. Cynthia says, I always just bought that big bag of chips and por portioned it into baggies. Yes, that is, I mean, you're saving three times the amount of money. You're saving, so almost $14 versus $1.70. So we'll say $2, $14 versus $2. You're saving $12 for literally five minutes worth of work. I can pre-package two or three bags of chips for two weeks, let's say, in literally five minutes. I mean, it, it's no time at all. And then just get a cute basket and just set them on the basket and the kids can just grab them out and make their own lunches with it. Um, <clears throat> Monique says to use the Spam in, in soups. It's delicious. I have never heard that tip. That is a new one on me have to try that. I would think like an egg drop type soup. That would be really good. Actually, if you put it in egg drop soup, that would be really, really good. So just add some to our, our egg drop, egg flour soup in our Dinah and Dom cookbook. Um, Andy says she got a whole ham for $1.48 a pound. You go girl. She's using that instead of lunch meat. Yes. I made ham sandwiches, ground up ham sandwiches when the kids went and Mike went skiing the other day and Mike said it tasted so good. And all I did was used ranch mayonnaise. I just, I know I keep touting it, but I keep, I use the ranch dressing mix dip and I made it and just put it in mayonnaise instead of making a salad dressing. I am using buttermilk. I just put it in mayonnaise and took some chopped ham and put that mayonnaise, ranch mayonnaise in the chopped ham. And he said it was one of the best ham sandwiches he's ever eaten. Super yummy. Um, Cynthia says, I used to live near the factory that made Fig Newtons. They put the same cookies in name band packaging and store packaging. They do. The, <coughs> the stores pay for them to repackage the food and put their own store name on it. Sarah says turkeys are 50% off by, by us. I bought three at 75 cents a pound. You go girl. That is great. I just cooked our turkey from thanks our, our sale turkey that I got yesterday because um, I wanted to make room for all that meat that I was buying today. So I bought the turkey and peeled it all off the bones. Once again, I know guys, I'm just, you guys cannot comprehend. There are over 1500 recipes and tip in here, tips in here. This, between the two of these, this one by itself is an encyclopedia on frugal cooking, but together you have an encyclopedia set on frugal cooking. You really do. I'm telling you, it will save you money and get you in and out of the kitchen fast without coupons and without spending a lot of time cooking. Connie, did you get your chicken this morning? So you're not going to believe what happened with my chicken. I did not get the chicken this morning. I woke up at 630. I honestly wanted to stay in bed because I wasn't feeling good. But I laid there for a while and tried to go back to sleep, and I couldn't. So I was like, okay, I'll just get up and go to the store. I get there, and there's no chicken. I'm like, okay. So I go ask the butcher. I said, do you have any of the 97-cent chicken on sale? He said, what 97-cent chicken? I said, the one that's in your ad. He said, well, I don't have it here on my list. So I'm sitting there pulling it up on the app because, of course, it's only online, and I've got bad reception in the store, so it takes a while. And I said, this 97 cent chicken right here. And he said, nope, we didn't get any of that. And I don't even know anything about it. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're advertising a sale and you don't even know anything about it. 
So he gave me two packages of chicken tenders for 97 cents. He said, well, that's all I have because the rest that I have are for a special order. So I totally bombed out on the 97 cent chicken. Actually, I think that's false advertising. But I still saved like $800, $700 on me with all of the bacon and the roast. I got roast for $2.70 a pound. I got hamburger for $2.70 a pound. And then I got bacon for $2 a pound. So I still saved many hundreds of dollars, which is fine. I came home, repackaged it all through uh, the bacon. It literally took me, you guys will see this on our Tight Wad Tuesday video coming up this week, but I had four boxes that were 15 pounds each. They were about this big and about this big. I repackaged them and it only took me 20 minutes to repackage them all. That's all it took. And instead of paying $8 a pound for bacon, I got it for $2. That's definitely worth 20 minutes worth of work. And you said, was that at Albertsons? That, no, that was at Ridley's. It was at a, a local grocery store called Ridley's. Helen says, hello from Malta. I love your shows full of wisdom, very practical tips. Hello. Actually, we had a Swedish exchange student live with us when I was in high school and they would always go to Malta for their vacations. And I never had a desire to go, but now I'm kind of thinking it would be cool to visit there. Oh, I don't know. Sure. It just sounds like it would be pretty neat to go visit there. So welcome. I'm glad you watch us. Maybe if I ever go there someday, I can meet you. It's not very big. I mean, it's pretty tiny, I think, from what I understand. <coughs> Evie says, 25 cents a pound pasta at Aldi today, shaped like Christmas trees. Oh, my goodness. I hope you got a ton of it. That is a great deal. And that pasta, pasta lasts forever. So it'll last you a really long time. And it's a great tip about Christmas tree pasta. Like, who cares if you save a lot of money? Yeah. A lot of people won't buy it because it's Christmas trees, but you should. Why not? I'll eat Christmas tree pasta at Easter. Who? I mean, for 25 cents? You go, girl. That's a great deal. Sarah, Kroger store brand chips are way cheaper. I think I spent $1.79 a bag. Yeah, they're they're definitely a lot cheaper. Melinda, all these Cheetos are just as good and only $1.69. I totally agree. I There's not one. The only thing we did not buy at Aldi's was Mike really likes his Hershey syrup. And so my Dining on a Dime cookbook has my Hers has Hershey syrup. It's just called chocolate syrup. But um. He will eat the Dining on a Dime, Volume 1 has it, and then he will eat regular Hershey's, but he, that's the only thing was the chocolate syrup at Aldi's. That's the only item at Aldi's that we didn't regularly eat, and even that really wasn't that bad. I mean, we had no money. I was like, that's what you get, or you're not getting it at all because I can't afford it. Like, sometimes the... This is where you have to compare prices. So, like, sometimes... The cocoa baking mix, the, do I have any, uh, yeah. So sometimes your baking cocoa like this, it can be more expensive to make it homemade than just buying like the store brand chocolate syrup. <coughs> so when that was the case, I would tell Mike, Sorry, ain't in the grocery budget, so that's going to have to be a birthday present in six months. <laughs> Were you deprived as a husband? No. Mm. Wow, no hesitation, dear. That's great. Uh, Natalie, where in the world are you finding cereal anywhere under $2? I find it all the time. I, I just watched the sales with the Cheerios here. Um, it was on sale for $1.77. I had a 50 cents off each box. So it was $1.27. This right here was after Halloween, I think, clearance for $0.50 cents a box. And this one right here is Rice Krispies. And they were from Halloween. And they were 90% off. And I can't remember. I think I paid $0.20 cents a box for those. 
was that what it was? No, I think I paid 40, 40 or 50 cents a box for the rice, oops, the Rice Krispies also. And so during our kitchen remodel, guess what our desserts are gonna be? Right here. Who cares if it's orange? It doesn't matter. So that's what our desserts are gonna be for the boys is Rice Krispie treats, easy, no bake fudge cookies, those types of things while we're doing our kitchen remodel. Well, and that kind of goes back to, if you just walk in the store, did you mention that already? If you just walk in the store at any moment, you're going to pay the highest price. Yep. And and watch. Don't I don't shop with a list. I mean, I shop with a list. But I don't go in and say, I'm only buying these things on my list. No. Why? Because if I did that, I would not have been able to pick up these 50 cent box of Rice Krispies right here. And guys, these are huge boxes. This is a big family box here. I mean... It's a big box. It's not just the regular box. So you can't limit yourself to just shopping what's on your list. Always give yourself a little wiggle room for deals and um, bargains that you can find along the way. Melinda, what did you do with 50 boxes of cereal? We ate it. I mean... We didn't eat it all at once. No, but 50 boxes of cereal is about a year's supply. And we go through about a box of Cheerios a week. <coughs> I'm gluten-free. Mike and my son Jack just love Cheerios. Well, I guess Dave does too. And so we eat about one box a week. So that's a year's worth of Cheerios. They didn't expire for almost two years. And cereal can go about two years past the best buy date. So I just, I just used it. Um, what do we think about coffee and tea? Go for it. I drink tea all the time. I love tea. I have many cups of tea a day. Um, what is the best advice for altitude adjustment? So we do have the altitude adjustment in our Dining on a Dime cookbooks here for you. I have lived in um, the mountains of Colorado at 8,500 feet. I have lived on the foothills of Colorado at 5,700 feet. And I have lived in the... In between here in Sheridan, Wyoming at 3,700 feet. So some things need to be adjusted for altitude. Not everything. When I lived in the mountains and I lived in Colorado, honestly, I really didn't change that much. Um, it's not a big deal. Just add an extra quarter of a cup of flour to your cake mixes or brownie mixes or two tablespoons, two tablespoons to a quarter cup. You might just... Uh, test it and see how it works for your altitude <coughs> but it's not that big of a deal so um i would say my the only thing that really really had altitude issues was in my dining on a dime gluten-free dairy-free cookbook my sandwich bread that is delicious and only a dollar fifty to make compared to seven dollars in the store 35 percent off for a book right now guys my sandwich, my gluten-free, dairy-free sandwich bread, that's the only one that I had trouble with altitude. And it specifically has high altitude directions and regular altitude directions in here. And if you're on the border of altitude like I am, just try the other one that you didn't try. So if you think you try, so if you tried the high altitude and it didn't work, then try the regular one and see if it works. But you must follow the directions exactly. If you follow the directions exactly, you will have the best tasting gluten-free, dairy-free bread in the world. But you must follow the directions exactly. Monique, would our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook be useful even if you aren't food sensitive? I already have the red and blue books, so wondering if the recipes are reformatted. Yes, the recipes are reformatted. It's the same book as our Dining on a Dime Volume 1. It's just everything is gluten-free, dairy-free. So if you don't need to be, you don't need to buy this. It's not totally separate recipes. Andrea, Andrea says she's eating the fudge brownies from our Dining on a Dime Volume 1, and they are amazing. Yay. And oh, Amira says 
Hello from McCall, Idaho. We actually know where McCall <laughs> is. We used to live <clears throat> in Nez Perce and would go through McCall and we would come through Colorado. We love McCall. We love McCall. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, we had thought about moving back there when we were coming here. Um, that was one of the places we were looking to move because we loved McCall. We lived in Nez Perce and uh, we loved it there. It just, after we had kids, it was too hard going to town with two toddlers and a baby. So, or I mean, a ba with babies and toddlers, I should have said. I had two kids at the time, so. Mm. No Miar says, I'm making your overnight pancake recipe, but I'm using <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm making your overnight pancake recipe, but I'm using a little bit of my sourdough starter instead of packaged yeast. Is it a good idea or a bad idea? Hey, go for it. I think that's a great idea. Probably be really tasty. Barbara, Vicks Vapor Rub works wonders on colds. Yes, we have all been um, slathering ourselves with it. Um, well, Mike and I haven't this time, but we normally do. We probably need to get it out again. Um, put it on your feet. Yes. So our colds just got significantly worse last night, as you guys can tell if you watched our show yesterday. <laughs> so we're probably going to be pulling out the big guns tonight. Um, it's, we just have had a lot going on with our kitchen remodel, trying to get the kitchen cleared out. And I still don't have all the Christmas decorations taken down. So I'm working on that. And then of course I ran to the grocery store this money morning ran to the thrift stores just because honestly I wanted to get out of the house just for a little bit <clears throat> but and I didn't really need to I just wanted to do it <coughs> <coughs> had no plans of buying anything at the grocery store and you guys are just gonna die when you see my thrift store hauls on tightwad Tuesday coming up I couldn't believe it I was like oh Tara Really don't need, well, I, I mean, I kind of did need the stuff, or, and I wanted the stuff, so. But I got one really cool thing. Oh, I'm so excited to show you guys. Thank you, Joyce, for ordering our books. Thank you so much. Amber says, I've been making homemade granola bars and granola. So much healthier to DIY, more economical, too. Yeah, because you can adjust the sugar then, and you can lower the sugar level if you want in the granola bars. Lisa, I love the granola. Not exactly healthy, but great when I have the munchies. Yeah, I mean, granola in general is not healthy. All granola is is a glorified oatmeal cookie. That's all granola is. There's nothing healthy about it, really. Um, so, but, you know, you can adjust it, and it's certainly much cheaper to make the homemade granola in here for cereal. It takes about... 50 cents worth of ingredients compared to the grocery store when it's like probably seven dollars a box now <coughs> that recipe is at livingonadime.com just type in granola and you'll find the recipe on our website also thank you joyce for ordering the books i think i said that brenda wants to know when's the best time to shop day or night it just depends on your stores some stores mark their stuff down like their meats <laughs> some stores mark their meats down in the morning some stores mark their meats down at night some stores mark their dairy down in the morning some mark them down at night it just really depends on your store judy you can use your walmart app to scan clearance items sometimes they're marked down even more i know how do i do that i need to figure out how to do that on my phone because i keep walking up to the cash, cash register and i need to stop doing that because I need to figure out how to use my app to um, see if, because I'm waiting for the 90% clearance on Walmart. I know, but there's a few things that I'll get if they go 90%, but if they don't go 90%, I won't. Um, Wilman says, I buy simple, plain yogurt and add a tablespoon of jam to it. That way I know what kind of sweetener is in it. There you go. That's the way to do it. A whole lot less sugar, probably. 
99 Zane says all store-bought baked goods taste more and more sweet to me, but the lack of actual taste. I do use homemade vanilla in mine and I'll splurge for real chocolate for my cookies. We like them better. I thought all chocolate chips were real chocolate. I don't know. Maybe not. I use real chocolate for mine all the time too. And actually I have a tip for that coming up in tomorrow's video. Also, Connie says, I got books one and two for my daughter and my son-in-law and they're using them to save on groceries. Yay. Thank you so much. And guys, they're 35% off right now. So go grab them for our new year's sale. Judy, with my app, I saw Clarence Items box miss stickers at $1.50 skin with the Walmart app, and it was actually 25 cents. Took them all. Good for you. Oh, what a deal. Was that recently? I might go check my Walmart and see. Wow. Uh, Vicki, there is a video on the planner sales page showing how to use our planner. That's for our 22 plan 2022 planner, but it is shown on there how to use it. It's the same exact planner. It's just undated instead of dates. How long is pickle relish good past the date on the jar? Oh, I don't know. Several months, probably six months. I would say it's got vinegar, so it's a preservative. Is that if it's open or if it hasn't, if it hasn't Even been if opened? It's, yeah. If it hasn't been opened a couple of years, but if it's been opened, I would say six months probably. Um, let's see. Where did I get my headband, Teresa wants? So this is my bird's nest, as Mike calls it. Mom just... and I found it at a garage sale, and she had it packed up for me for Christmas. I said, oh, I'd like this for Christmas. She's like, okay, because she didn't have any Christmas presents for me. And so it was wrapped up, and it looked like a bird's nest in the Christmas wrapping. So we keep calling it my bird's nest uh, <laughs> my bird's nest headband. <laughs> I only saw the little pattern on the edge when she had it in the box. Yeah. Like, what, is that a bird's so nest? it was pretty funny. So I got it for $2.50, I think, at a garage sale. <coughs> Ashley says, we stopped buying all these snack items. We cook from scratch, buy cake mixes, and make homemade frosting. Yep. Yeah, you can't afford to buy junk food. Yeah, really, guys. I mean, that's junk food now. That's getting absolutely ridiculous for the price. So, yeah. Um, Jean says, when I go to the store, I barely spend over $60 and come home with a lot of groceries. Oh, yeah. I can spend $60 and have a huge cart of groceries. I mean, a huge cart of groceries. So, yeah. Norman says, I really like the longer two-hour type shows. Perhaps the time frame is like movie length, but more fun to watch than most, most movies. Ah, did you hear that, dear? We're more fun than most movies. <laughs> thank you. I'm not sure how we're more fun, but thank you. Appreciate it. It was so funny. I got to tell you guys something funny that happened. So I've been going to my local Habitat Restore here, like, oh my goodness, every other day for the last several weeks because... We're remodeling the kitchen, so I'm looking for parts for the kitchen. And right now, I'm specifically looking for a kitchen sink. I know I already have three kitchen sinks, but I changed my mind again. Mm -hmm. And I actually have a fourth kitchen sink that I'm probably going to use, but I'm just keeping my eye out in case I find something else that might work better. And <clears throat> I need a kitchen sink and a new kitchen table. For some reason, our kitchen table has warped. And so I can't sit at the kitchen table and work now because it's it my computer wobbles on the table. So anyway, so I'm looking for those two things. So I've been into the restore. Well, Brad is, um, I told him about our YouTuber channel one time and he started watching, uh, I don't know, six months ago or so. And, um, so this morning I forgot to tell him like this. So this morning he was talking to another customer that he knows really well. And I was checking out with my bargain deals five cents for my Christmas decorations. You guys will see that on Taiwan Tuesday. But he was like, oh, he said, so-and-so, this is Taryn, and she's a famous YouTuber. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm famous. He said, well, how many subscribers do you have? I said, well, a little over 300,000. He said, yo, you're famous. I'm like, well, in the YouTube world, that's not really famous, but so it was just hilarious. The restore guy telling everybody that that we're famous YouTubers. I was like, I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, actually, I'm going to be doing a video with him in just a couple of weeks on how to shop at thrift stores. 
Uh, Sob, how did you get on cooking all your chicken and ham? So actually I did really well. I got about 25 pounds of chicken cooked up in the Instant Pot, shredded and put in the freezer. I got the ham is defrosted and I'm cutting that up today to put in the freezer. Um, and that's all I ended up doing. Since I didn't get the other chicken on sale at the grocery store, I decided to wait on cooking the rest of the stuff up. And I do think I, my big thing with the kitchen remodel was I didn't want grease splatting all over everything for cooking hamburgers and stuff. But I had a hello Tara moment. I'll just use the grill. So I'm going to send Mike down to get a couple of propane tanks so we can make, we need to get them anyway, just for emergency stock. That's the only thing that we regret getting rid of when we moved, isn't it, dear? is our propane tanks. We gave our propane tanks to the neighbor and yeah. we didn't realize it's a $20 deposit for the propane tanks. We were like, what were we thinking? We didn't, I mean, we didn't know. And so that's the only thing we, 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 blah, blah, we regret when we moved, but you know, guys on things like that, you really, you can regret it, but don't, don't dwell on it. <coughs> I mean, yeah, we gave the neighbor $100 worth of propane tanks and we didn't know it. And honestly, first of all, that neighbor that we gave them to helped us out so much that we probably got 20 times that $100 in propane tanks of help from him over the year, 10 years that we lived there. Well, I guess they moved in after us. So what, five, six years that, that they were our neighbors. And so just to give those to him as a thank you because he's a hunter and he he would use them a lot and just as a thank you for all the help that he'd given us i don't regret it really and i mean we got rid of thousands of dollars of furniture when we moved so we wouldn't have to move it and just spent a couple of hundred of dollars to buy it all here <clears throat> at garage sales and thrift stores so Really, I saved thousands of dollars in moving costs. I mean, I'm not kidding. We we had probably a semi trucks worth of <clears throat> stuff that we probably got rid of just because we had so many people in our family. And then my two older kids moved out and they took some stuff also. So I don't really regret it. It's just one of those things that we were like, man, we didn't know that those propane tanks were so valuable. Um. <coughs> holy cow Tarsha says she has frozen turkeys for 29 cents a pound at their grocery store I bought two turkeys for three dollars each that is a stinking good deal I don't know that I've seen it that cheap ever guys some of these prices are cheaper than I've ever seen or in 20 years I haven't seen these prices this low now is a really good time to be stocking up. And like with that turkey, if I didn't have room in my freezer for a whole turkey, I would bring it home, throw it in the oven, do our slow roast cookie turkey, which is the only way to cook turkey. I am telling you, this is the only way to cook turkey. Livingonadime.com is the recipe. Just type in turkey recipe, livingonadime.com. This slow roast turkey I guarantee you, if you hate turkey, you will love this turkey. You will absolutely love this turkey. As a matter of fact, it was hilarious because last night Jack was telling us one of his friends at school said, oh, I hate turkey. It's always so dry. And Jack said, uh-uh-uh. If you use our recipe in our Dining on a Diet cookbook, it's the most moist turkey you will ever eat. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, but he's right. <clears throat> Use that recipe and you will absolutely love turkey. So what I would do is take and cook that turkey up, break it into um, small packets, save the broth if you like the broth, and um, freeze that also for soups. And then one, you know, a turkey, let's say a turkey's this big. Let's say a turkey's this big, okay? You can get all of the broth and the meat and everything for this turkey down to about this big for packets. That's all you're using. So and that's how you can do it. You can send me the next load, Mike. Um, 
<clears throat> Andy says, I'm making Shayla hams and noodles <laughs> for my own cream of chicken for it. Very good. So we have your own homemade cream of soup mixes in here. And <clears throat> Shayla, who's my sister-in-law, her ham and noodle recipe. Oh, it's so delicious. It is a great way to use up all of that Christmas ham that you have frozen. We also have a video if you go if you go search 11 ways to use ham. Um, I don't think so. I missed if you commented on how to preserve avocados. So the short version is I freeze them and that video is actually coming out tomorrow. So Mona, watch for that video. It's coming out tomorrow. <coughs> ah, handy. Oh, that's funny. She says, I just deleted my case of pop on my upcoming Walmart order. I inspired her. Okay, so let's have a little Tara moment here. <laughs> People say, I don't have the money to stock up. She just deleted her probably $7 case of pop from Walmart out of her groceries. Now, she has $7 that she could spend and go buy bacon on sale. Hamburger on sale, roast on sale. Then she has saved not only the first $7, but she was able to use that $7 and invest it in some sale meat so that instead of buying one meal's worth of meat, she got three meals worth of meat or four or five or six or seven meals worth of meat. <clears throat> That is how you stock up and it's super easy, but you have to start making those little changes like canceling the one case of pop and then investing in the meat that's on sale or on clearance. And that's how you get ahead. Good job, Andy. I'm proud of you. Um, well, then says, what does the vinegar candy on 341 of volume one taste like vinegar? No, it really doesn't taste like vinegar. It's like a, and it's not really sweet and sour. It has a very light sour taste, but I mean, very light, very, very light. We're not talking like sour gummy bears or anything like that. It's just kind of a little bit of a, I don't know how, I, it's hard to describe, but it's really <clears throat> good. You should try it. It's, it's actually a really good candy. You should try it. Thank you, Diane, for the $20 super chat for Bibles. Guys, we give away free Bibles. We don't contact you. We do not call you. We do not email you. Nothing. <clears throat> we just want people to have the Word of God in their hands. It's a large print, easy to read version of the Bible. And you can get it for free on our website, livingonadime.com. And that is what Diane is donating to. Because some people like to donate to help us pay for the Bibles. Um, but they are totally free. Just use the coupon code free Bible and you can have a Bible for free. And how that started is we started ask, uh, answering people's Bible questions. And um, some of our viewers didn't have Bibles. And we said, well, we'll send you one. And then <laughs> it just kind of morphed. <clears throat> and now we have, uh, we probably, what? Did we ship today, dear? I don't know. Probably we ship anywhere from 10 to 20 Bibles a day now. So thank you so much for that, Diane. Um, Chris, what do you think about a second freezer? I have the cash, but I'm wondering if it's just too much. So I don't know how many people are in your family. If you have a large family, I would say definitely. If you have a small family, I would say, uh, it kind of depends. I personally have a second freezer, but it's only because I got it for free. And it's a smaller one. So, uh, I don't know. It does save a lot, but you can get to the point where it's too much and you have to make sure that you're really good about rotating your food and using the food that's in there. Like I found a chicken from a year ago that got stuck back and I didn't realize it. That was one of the chickens that I used up yesterday. Um, chicken was just fine. It tasted just fine, but you know, it depends on how good you are at keeping it organized and using up the food in there. So it really depends on your situation. I don't know what your situation is. 
uh, I have no idea what this name is. Villa something or another. Thank you for this channel. I learned so much. I live in Sweden. Scary times here because of the wars. Electricity has tripled and food and gasoline prices are crazy. Thank you for the good tips. You are welcome. And yes, you know, I have, um, I, we had a Swedish exchange student live with us and she's still living there. And so, man, I just, my, one of my kids wanted to move to Sweden and I like, please don't go right now. I'm begging you. Ugh, this is just not a good time. So we just, um, pray for you guys and hope that, um, that will get resolved soon. But you know, we're in the last days. The Bible says that there's going to be wars and that kind of thing. And so that's why we do these things, guys. I mean, that's why we have stockpiles because we bought this food before the prices went up. And for the thousand dollars that I spent on this food, it would have cost me a thousand two hundred and fifty dollars this year for it. Well, what kind of investment makes 25% return on your money? And so like she was saying, you know, if you can prepare ahead of time, it's not going to stop the high prices, but you may be able to pay for your gas bill then if you've already stockpiled food that's been on sale before or that you've grown or whatever, and then you can pay for your gas bill or your mortgage or, or whatever you need to pay for that's going up. And so <coughs> that is why we do these things. Cause you never know what catastrophe or what government is going to do something crazy this time. You know, I mean, you just never know what's going to happen. <sighs> Wish we had really good sales like here, like that here in Kentucky. You do. Sure, you just need to look a little bit harder. Um, and you may have to drive a few miles. Guys, I drove 70 miles when I lived in Idaho once a month to stock up on good deals. So it was definitely worth the time and the money to take one day to drive into town when we lived out. We lived in a teensy, teensy tiny town of 400. And it was 70 miles to the nearest grocery store. And my grocery bill was $125 a month. And even back then, that was really stinking good. Even back then, most people were spending five and six hundred dollars a month on the grocery bills. Well, a lot of people can't find good deals in their area because they only look at one store. Yeah. You have to look at the ads at all the available mm -hmm. stores and try to figure out which ones are best yeah. on which things. And our friends in Norway, I mean, Norway has the most expensive grocery prices I've ever seen in ever. And our viewer friends that invited us and we went to go visit them in Norway, Torrid and her, her son. Yeah, see, Bonnie says we do have good sales in Kentucky. You do. You have them there. You're just not looking good enough. So just start, keep looking a little bit better, but, um, or a little bit more. Our friends in, in, uh, in Norway, they would drive to Sweden or they do drive to Sweden once a year. Stock up a year's worth of groceries because in Sweden, the groceries are a lot cheaper than in Norway. So they would drive from Norway to Sweden, stock up on the groceries. And guys, it's an eight hour drive from where they're at. This is not a short jaunt. Okay. It's not like they live 10 miles over the border from Sweden. It was an eight hour drive to drive from where they were in Bergen, Norway, all the way over to Sweden to get the groceries. So sometimes you got to do some work, but it's worth it. Um, Ashley, I love all your videos. My husband and I have done all your tips. Yay. <clears throat> Tam, what's your favorite money saving grocery store from week to week? I don't have one. So first of all, we only, well, I would say Aldi across the board. Aldi has over the years been the best grocery store ever, but I've only lived in one town that had Aldi. I only had Aldi for about 10 years. Well, I had Aldi growing up and then I had uh, Aldi for about 10 years when we lived in Kansas. And then the other 18 years that I've been married, we haven't had Aldi. And, <laughs> and um, so we, uh, <clears throat> the majority of our time, I just watch the sales and just see which store has clearance or sales. Diana says, I got a spiral ham for 79 cents a pound. It cost about $7. Good job. Yeah, cut that baby up into little uh, portion size packets and you can be using it with your eggs. Oh, that's yum. 
Um, Janice says she has cooked every single recipe. Are you wow. serious? Oh my goodness. Dining on a dime cookbook. She has cooked every single recipe, all money saving and all delicious. Even more, they are fast and easy. Thank you. I mean, I always agree with you guys, but I still learn. Thank you so much. Yes. I mean, guys, we made the recipes quick and easy to get you in and out of the kitchen without coupons, without a lot of time. And she's right. I don't have the energy to cook. That's why I did the recipes so easy. Um, <clears throat> 35% off right now, guys. Livingonadime.com for our New Year's sale. It is 35% off for our Volume 1, Volume 2, and the green one is our gluten-free, dairy-free. Um, Monique, you, I've totally changed the way I shop. I now buy those five-pound packages of ground beef and come home and pre-brown it and freeze it, make meatballs, meatloaf for the freezer. Dinner is done in a jiff. You go! That is great! <coughs> That's exactly what I'll do. I'll buy five or 10 pounds of ground beef makeup. It doesn't take, here's the thing. People think it takes a lot of time and I don't spend all day doing freezer meals. If, if that's your drive, go for it. I don't care, but I don't have the energy to do that. And so what I do is I will buy five or 10 pounds of ground beef and make meatloaf for one meal. And I'll just make, I'll just double or triple or quadruple the batch it doesn't take any longer, except for maybe five minutes to package it up, maybe. But um, then I'll just make it up, make the meatballs, freeze them. And then I have instant dinner just to throw in the ovens a lot of nights. Amy says, the grocery stores here in Wilmington, Delaware, always have limits on sales, sometimes just one or two. Do you run into that? Yes. And I just get as many as I can. I'll send all my family members in to get them if... Um, you know, we're going to church or whatever and we need to stop by and I'll stop by the store and all three of us will go in and get one. If it's limit one per person, if it's limit one per household, then no, but that's how we do it. Yeah. And if it's limit one per traction per transaction, then you can get several transactions worth. So Tara, your tips are the best today. Honey Nut Cheerios were on sale at my store for $1.77 a box. I had coupons for a dollar off. There you go. 77 cents each. Good job. That is great. Tarsha said that. Amy, I just received my Dining on Dime cookbook and I love it. Yay! I'm so glad. Irene, I should move to America for good deals. I mean, <coughs> meat in the Netherlands is really expensive. Yes, it is. Um, I know there? full good and well how fortunate we are as Americans to have such good deals on food. I totally understand that. So... But at the same time, when we visited in Europe, I was still, now we weren't in, it's been 30 years since I've been to the Netherlands. So, you know, I don't know what your prices are now, but three years ago we went to um, Europe and I still found lots of really good deals in England, Ireland, and um, then Norway was the really expensive one. Uh, Leah says she loves the brownies from our gluten-free cookbook. It's the green one, 35% off right now. Aren't those delicious? Oh, I just love those brownies. Wanda, does Belgian waffle maker cook the same as a regular one? I've never used either one, but I got a Belgian one as Christmas. Yes. I mean, the only difference is it has bigger holes and it, it's, so it's about this, it's a round shape instead of a square and it has larger holes is the only difference for a Belgian waffle. Does it use the same batter? Yeah, it uses the same batter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Connie, oil of oregano, please try it. Tablet form. I don't know for what, but... For the cold. Oh, for our cold. Everyone mm -hmm. was trying to make suggestions. I don't know where in the world we would get that here. I don't know. Somebody's probably got it in town. That'd be interesting to try, see if that works. Hmm. Jane, how did you clear out your kitchen? So it's not totally cleared out yet, but last night, Mike, while I was shredding up the chicken and getting all the chicken pre-frozen, Mike unloaded one cabinet for me, our big cabinet for me. And then today I had the boys come unload about six or seven cabinets for me, had them get boxes and get that done. So the kitchen's about half unloaded. 
we're going to take a break after the show and then go in and try to get the rest of it unloaded after the show. And I'm just really kind of freaking out about this whole kitchen remodel. I really shouldn't be. I know we came up with, well, actually Mike came up with another idea like a month ago and we we're like, ah, uh, I don't know if we should do that or not. And then he brought it up again last night and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Actually, I really like that idea. And I think it might be worth the cost to do that idea. I don't know. We'll see. If we could do it for about four or $5,000, his idea, then it would be worth it. I don't know if we could. I think we could maybe. I don't know. But he came up. It was just brilliant. So I'm going to tell you guys about it when we start our kitchen remodel series. But or I don't know, maybe we should just surprise them and not tell them what your brilliant idea is and surprise them. Should we do that? We could, although only if it works. <laughs> only if it works. If it doesn't work, well, they would know if it's going to work before we do it. If it doesn't work, it would be a huge disaster in our kitchen. But, I mean, they would tell us before they did anything if it would work or not. <coughs> Vicky says, I make smelted chocolate candy, white milk chocolate, white chopped walnuts, coconut marshmallows, semi chocolate chips scooped into parchment paper and stored in the fridge. Yeah, they call that microwave candy, crock pot candy. It's really good. Um, Gina, I found some bottles of sparkling grape juice tucked away in the basement, thinking they may just get a wee bit fermented but not dangerous. Well, it, I did. Is it expanded? If it's expanded then yeah, it's probably fermented. But if it's not expanded, then they're probably just fine to drink. Um, I don't know if it would expire. I don't The sparkling, maybe it would. I don't know. But yeah. Barbara says, her pharmacist says, 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C shortens the duration of colds. Hmm, I'll have to try that. Yeah, mom's got it really bad. So she's kind of frustrated because like it's been one thing after another since she moved here and she hasn't had a stretch of more than about two weeks where something hasn't been going on. And so she kind of was hoping to get, get some stuff done. And I was like, Oh brother. Jane says she's excited to see our kitchen remodel. Want to replace our 22 year old carpet in the living room. We'll hold off until our home mortgage is paid off. You go girl. So here's the reason why we did not wait on the kitchen remodel before paying off the house. So all the contractors here are pretty much busy in the summer, like ridiculously busy, like years out, ridiculously busy. But during the winter projects like that, they can do well, they could do it now in January, or we would probably have to wait until next January to do it because then they would be doing all their outdoor projects. So that's why we decided to go ahead and instead of putting that money on the house to get the house paid off quicker to start the, the remodel. And that's why we're having our sales guys. So we can, I'm sorry, I'm being selfish, but we want to get our house paid off super, super quick. That's why we have our dining and our dining cookbooks, all of them 35% off and our eBooks are 50% off for all of you <coughs> folks outside of the United States. Go grab our eBooks. I'm super sorry. We just cannot ship internationally any anymore. You can thank your governments for your restrictions on taxes and, and customs and all that stuff. We just, the bureaucratic paperwork that we have to go through and deal with, with VAT taxes and customs and all that, we just can't do it anymore. And so that's why we offer the eBooks on sale for you guys outside the U.S. <coughs> Beverly, what is a good price to pay for dry milk? I don't know how much it is right now. I, I honestly don't know a good price right now. You just have to compare with what you have. What are you guys doing to take care of your cough and cold? Pedro wants to know. So um, we use a nebulizer. We use vitamin C, vitamin D, elderberry, colostrum. Lysine. <laughs> Lysine. I mean, we just dope ourselves up with colostrum this time. Yeah, we just dope ourselves up with all kinds of stuff. So... Um, Andy, my kitchen sink faucet is so high. It always splashes. You should watch for that. I am not getting a high kitchen sink or kitchen faucet. So yeah, that's a good tip. Diane, I'm sitting here feeling lazy because I got this bug that's going around and really enjoying the videos. I am not exaggerating. 
I think literally every single person in our town is sick right now. I mean, you cannot, I have not been anywhere. I went to the eye doctor. They were sick. I went to um, the school. Everybody was sick. The grocery store, Walmart, everybody is sick here. That's why everybody's like, oh, you shouldn't be going out spreading it around. I'm not spreading anything. They already have it. It's like the entire town is sick. It's crazy. So anyway, yeah, Barbara, Tara for Congress 2024. I don't know. You think I should run for Congress? <coughs> I don't think they can handle you. You don't think they could handle? They couldn't no. handle me. Just, their heads would explode off of the top of their shoulders. They could not handle me. Later, she said they should appoint you to the budget committee. Oh, they really couldn't handle me for the budget committee. <coughs> Sorry, you can't have your bridge to nowhere. <coughs> you can't have your what? You can't have your bridge to nowhere. <laughs> you can't have your bridge to nowhere. Oh, my goodness. Barbara, I would be a fantastic speaker of the house, too. Oh, man. You know what? Anybody know what my phrase would be to Congress? <coughs> I haven't said it for a while, so those of you watching, comment if you've watched us for a while. Do I got any more comments, dear? Um, uh, yeah, just a second. <laughs> Do you guys know what my phrase would be? Let's see if they know what it would be. I'll get it while Mike's looking. Let me see if anybody. Um, <clears throat> my Walmart went up a dollar thirty a loaf for bread. Holy moly! It went up a dollar thirty. Oh, wow! I said it went was up to a dollar thirty. Wow. Man, a lie. That's crazy. I got a bread maker for five dollars today, so I'll probably get it. Ah, yep. I would be yelling, "Get it together, people!" Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I would be knocking some heads together, just like Marjorie. What's her name? And Laura. What's her? Laura's actually. I knew about her before she got into Congress. Congress. And uh, <clears throat> my hairdresser was talking about her, Bobbit. She owned. I think. A restaurant in the mountains and she was always known for carrying her gun or something around the restaurant and was she from montana no colorado <laughs> oh okay <coughs> up by evergreen somewhere oh, you're talking about Laura Bobbitt lauren or whatever her name. yeah whatever her name is mm -hmm. or lauren i don't know what her name is exactly i just remember hearing about her yeah lauren bobbert there you go yeah and marjorie taylor green Oh my goodness, the three of us. You think the other three on the Democrat side got some going for it? Oh my goodness, you get the three of us together. Oh, we would just trample them. We would just trample them. They would have nothing on us. <laughs> Tons of people saying, get it together, people. <laughs> uh, see, you guys know me. You guys know me. Do I strain the bits of meat out of the turkey broth? How long does it last in the fridge or freezer? So, yes, I do. And it lasts about three to four days in the fridge. And then the freezer's six months to a year. It depends on, you can vacuum seal it also in um, jars and it'll last even longer in the freezer. But I would just put it in bags and freeze it six months, nine months. <coughs> Connie, does it matter the size of the turkey to cook overnight? Nope. Just throw that puppy. Guys, stop making the recipe in our cookbook for the bet most perfect turkey you will ever eat. Stop making it more complicated than you need to. Literally, take the turkey, throw a stick of butter, a salted butter in there, turn it breast side down, cover it with foil, throw it in your oven 175 to 200 degrees, just let it cook for 8 to 10, 15. I had my turkey in for 24 hours yesterday. Why? Because I just couldn't get to it. I pulled it out, moist, delicious, not overcooked. It was like 10 pounds, I think. Don't make it more complicated. That is literally all you need to do. Throw a stick of salted butter in, turn it breast side down, cover it with foil, and put that puppy in the oven 175 to 200 degrees anywhere from eight to 15, even 24 hours if you want. So that's all you do. And it will be the best turkey you will ever eat. Tara, your opinion, please. I was given William Sonoma peppermint oh, no. bark. Someone asked for your opinion. <laughs> We're in trouble now. <laughs> it has a layer of white and chocolate. I wanted to make the fantasy fudge from it. Do you think it would work? Yeah. I mean, it will taste like peppermint and it'll be a lighter, a lighter color, of course, with the white and dark mixed, but yeah. 
you would have mint mint fudge. It would work just fine. Cindy, not only is the turkey the best tasting, I'm the one who gets all the meat off the bones in about half an hour. Yeah, it doesn't even, once you, once you do it, I mean, I think it took me about 10 minutes to pick it all off the bone last night and package it up and put it in the freezer. So for 10 minutes worth of work, so literally five minutes to put it in the oven, 10 minutes to pick it all off the bone, put it in freezer packets, and I had six meals with 15 minutes worth of work. Yeah. I mean, it does not get easier than that. Ashley, I agree. It's important to stock up at your cheaper store, such as Walmart, Grocery Outlet, Dollar Tree. Yeah, whatever, whatever the cheapest stores are in your area, stock up when you can. Julie, get it together, Congress. I know. Honestly, I have no hope for our country, and at the same time, there may be a glimmer of hope. I don't know. At this point, things are so chaotic and so ridiculous in our country, it could go any direction. And so I'm just like, you know what? Get your debt paid off. Get stocked up on what you can. Get your ducks in a row. And then if things turn south and totally go in the toilet, then you're prepared. If things get better for a little while, then you're still prepared and you can just live off of what you've already prepared for. And then still get good price. I mean, honestly, it could just go in the whole, what was that thing called? Omnibus or something packet. Yeah. I didn't even follow it because I was so ticked off. I just didn't even follow it. But frankly, every congressman who voted for that should be kicked out. Absolutely no reason for that nonsense to be going through. None. So I'm kind of like, you know what? Really, there's no hope for our country. But then at the same time, you never know what could happen. So maybe something will happen with, with the new Congress we have. Maybe not. But you never know. And I get it. Both sides have politicians that are just crooks. I totally get that. And I'm not saying that. But, you know, anyway. I cook 90 meals in a month for eight people. I love your cookbooks. Ashley. Thank you. Wow. You go, girl. There you go. Um, Monique, Janice should have done it on YouTube. I know. I had thought about hiring someone. And I have a new gal that I just hired here in town to do my Facebook marketing. And another gal in Casey, Wyoming, who emailed me. If you watch this, I am so sorry. I got behind on my emails and I got your email. But I had thought about having one of those two gals cook through the book for videos for my super easy recipes channel. For you guys who don't know, I actually have another YouTube channel called Super Easy Recipes. Michael put the link in there for you. Um, <clears throat> that I had thought about one of those two gals cooking through the cookbook for me because I just really frankly don't have time to do it. I would love to do it, but I just don't have time to do it right now. Um and so uh, uh -oh. I had thought about having one of those two cook through for me. Um, I really hope you do. You video a lot of your kitchen remodels. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to video of it. Um, oh, I yeah, right. You think people would? I mean, I don't know. Do you think people would really <laughs> be interested in it? I'm going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna to do two or three videos to start and see how it goes. But I don't know. We had thought about doing Monday's live. They're going to be demoing Monday. So we thought about doing Monday's live after they leave and showing you where they're at with it. It'll be interesting to see. Kimberly giving up pop because my husband was diabetic. In six months, he lost 50 pounds. He's also eating smaller portions. See, there you go. I'm telling you, that soda, it's awful. I was curious because it said he was diabetic. And I was wondering if the diabetes went away. It probably did, yeah. 
Uh, the money stress takes the joy out of being alive. Wondering if it's even worth it. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> the good news is you can do something about it. I, I guarantee you 95% of the people who have money stress, they can do something about it. They just choose not to. Uh, tea cider. I sent you an email, put your kitchen downstairs because you don't want to pay contractors for their skills and then use them for the last 20 to 30 minutes to clean up their mess. Do you understand what that means? No, but I was thinking we can tell her that we'll check the email. We will check the email. I don't know what that means, but, um, Book guilt. Let's see. Okay. So she says, if you're paying contractors for the skills, do you want them to spend their last 30 minutes on the jobs cleaning up so you can cook up there? No, I'm not. Oh, okay. No, I'm not cooking in my kitchen. My kitchen after tomorrow night, my kitchen is off limits for cooking and cleaning. It's either going to be done in the bathtub, in the bathroom, or we'll take it downstairs. We'll take everything downstairs then. I'm not going to have them clean up the kitchen for me to clean it. It's either going to be, we're going to have a um, <clears throat> another table in the dining room. It's going to be really crowded. But I'm just going to put another table up to put like the air fryer and that kind of stuff in. Most of that stuff I'm going to store in the garage and just bring it in as I decide to cook whatever. I'm going to use the grill a lot. <clears throat> so the main thing would just be clean up. I bought a chest today that I absolutely love <coughs> at the thrift store that I'm going to use in my mud room, but I think I'm going to bring that into my living room and it has these really nice slide out drawers and use that to put all of my dishes and frequently used uh, foods like bread and peanut butter, stuff like that um, in there. So no, I'm not my kitchen. I'm assuming I'm going to be doing nothing in my kitchen for the next six months. That's where I'm going with all that. You can do the next batch make. Um, but I'm not. Um, so we'll either just set it up there or um, take it downstairs. The only reason why I'm hesitant taking it downstairs is I'm not sure what's wrong with me but I have been dropping things a lot and I have fallen down the stairs, like, I don't know, probably five or six times. And so I'm almost getting a little afraid to go up and down the stairs. So if we're frequently going up and down stairs for cooking and all of that, I'm not sure I want to do that. I don't know. Breaking my neck going down the stairs might not be worth <laughs> The, uh, the convenience of having the kitchen downstairs, which we don't have an oven anyway. So it basically would just be for the sink, really, and the microwave and the sink. <coughs> so. Did you say six months? Uh, well, I'm thinking long term. So they told us. Case, three, so they told so, us three months, but we were just trying to not underestimate so that we're not. Well, stressed out if it goes longer. So they told us three months, but here's, I don't see how it's even going to be done in three months because they can't measure for the kitchen counters until they buy the cabinets, which take three months to get in. So the cabinets alone are going to take three months to get in. And then after they order, after the cabinets get in and get installed, then they can measure for the countertops. And then that's going to take another six to eight weeks for the countertops to come. And then I'm assuming another six weeks for issues happening. And now that we added another step <coughs> with Mike's really cool idea, if we can do that, that's going to take a little bit longer. So um, I don't know. I'm hoping it'll be three or four months, but I'm expecting six I don't know. Wanda said now would be a good time to write a book for microwave cooking. <laughs> I know. I'm going to do several videos on cooking when you don't have a kitchen. Wanda said she sees a chairlift in the future. I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we could run an escalator? <laughs> I know. Well, the problem is I'm slipping on the carpet. I was almost wondering if we need to replace the carpet. Someone but... had asked if you were having problems with the medication causing that. but I'm not on any medication. 
she's just always been kind of I've always been klutzy. klutzy. Yeah. yeah. I've always just been klutzy. So it's, you know, that's just me, unfortunately. But um <clears throat> Stephen, why would you do the demo before you had all the parts? Usually people have their cabinets done before they rip out the old ones. Okay, so Stephen wants to know why are we not why are we doing the demo before we have all the parts? Because I am reusing the kitchen cabinets I have to save myself $20,000 in buying new kitchen cabinets. So it's worth it to me to suffer without a kitchen for three more, three additional months to save $20,000 to not have to buy new cabinets. So what's happened is I'm reusing the cabinets I have. <clears throat> We're taking a big puzzle and moving all my kitchen cabinets around. <coughs> And hopefully we can do this without having to get new flooring. And by reusing kitchen cabinets, then I think I will need to buy one or two new cabinets to fill in holes for where I'm moving stuff. But I'm not positive because it depends on what the contractor can do with, I have this really big corner cabinet and it depends on what he can do with that. And I contacted him like a month ago and said, I'm going to need you guys' input because I don't know. I've changed my, my plan. So I don't know if you can do this. And they said, we'll just wait until we get there to start the work. I'm like, okay. So um, that's why I haven't ordered any of the parts because I can't order the parts until the contractor gets here and tells me, what he can build and what he can't build to fill in the holes. Well, also, after you discussed with them what you wanted to do, you realized some of that wasn't going to quite work and you wanted to change a few things, right? Yeah, well, I had to change a few things and because, because of that, we're, the and, arrangement wouldn't work. And because of that, we're not entirely clear what we need. Yeah, so I have to wait for the contractor to show up. Well, he had other jobs he was doing, so he can't show up till Monday. So, yeah. Um... Michelle, do I store wheat berries for emergency? No, I just do regular flour. Uh, we have rice. We don't need wheat. Honestly, flour to me is a luxury. And so um, <clears throat> we have rice that we can cook easily. Megan says, maybe remove the carpet on the stairs and put on non-skid strips. Yeah, I mean, we have, so we have, <coughs> we have two set, sets of stairs. And it's funny because Jack's friends at school came over one time because they borrowed our kitchen for home ec, our downstairs kitchen for home ec. And the girls um, did a tour of our house. And uh, they said, oh, they've got secret stairs in their house. Oh, they got secret. They're not secret. They're just being silly. But we have two sets of stairs. And so the one is the non-skid ones. And then the other is the carpet. And it's the carpet ones that I keep falling on. So I'm waiting to... The non skinned ones are out of the way for where Tara usually is. Yeah. But, you know, the extra steps would do me good anyway. So, uh, Tara Mike, if your kids lost their jobs, could they move back in with you? Well, it depends on the situation. In this current economy, no. Jobs are a dime a dozen. There's no reason for them to move back in with us. They can go get a job easy. And they wouldn't probably even ask. Yeah, they wouldn't even <laughs> ask. They wouldn't want to move back. They're adults. They're on their own. They don't need to move back. Um, now, if it was a 1929 stock market crash scenario where nobody can find jobs and that kind of thing, well, sure. I mean, they would still be expected to pull their weight around here and contribute and stuff like that. But it just depends on the situation or if one of them got married and you know, their spouse died or they got a divorce or whatever, and they needed a temporary place to um, stay, then that would be fine. But, you know, once you're adults, you're adults. Like I have never moved back in with my mom ever. I was 19 when I moved out and I have never, ever moved back in with my mom, even when I was just living on $300 a month, I figured a way. So there's really no need for kids to move back in with their parents for a more permanent situation. I totally understand. Like when my parents first got divorced or separated, 
we lived with my grandparents for a few months. And so I, you know, I understand there's situations like that, but you know, the majority of the time, there's no reason for them to do that. Uh, cat lover says she wants to see the remodel. I mean, I'll show some of the remodel. I just don't know how detailed I'm going to get on the remodel. I don't know. Maybe I'll get really detailed. Who knows? I mean, maybe it'll do, I don't know. Another YouTuber that was in our class for our, um, for our YouTube class. She was in the same class as us and, and, they were looking at our analytics and they were like, um, your remodel, they really like your remodel. <laughs> so they might For actually. Which the <coughs> hmm? For which thing? The remodel? Well, just another YouTuber who's in the same class as us. Gotcha. They were telling her that they actually like the remodel stuff a lot. Kind of like with us. We didn't think <laughs> anybody liked our grocery stuff. And now our grocery stuff is really taking off. As a matter of fact, if we go into our analytics, let me look and see here real quick. In, in our analytics, our top 10 videos, out of the top 10, we have one, two, uh, three, four, five things. Five out of our top 10 videos are grocery. <coughs> so people like our grocery stuff, I guess. Steven, how about... A GoPro up in the corner out of the way and then make us a time lapse. Or maybe we should just go live and just keep going live the whole time. The time lapse would be good, too. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a good idea, Steven. <coughs> Do we still have the GoPro? Is it working? I sent it to Ellie. She's using it for flying. Well, tell her to send it back. <laughs> Actually, BJ lost half the parts <laughs> before oh. I gave it to Ellie. She said, that's fine. Well, we could we rig the parts? I think she bought the rest of them. <sighs> Well, tell her to send it back. We need to borrow it back. Uh, see what kind of a mother I am. I'm so mean to my children. Because we can't afford it. <laughs> um, Tay Tay says to her, I saved my 2021 Thanksgiving. I forgot to be grateful, right? I was stressing about my frozen turkey. She was doing that live. That was definitely a God thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> when I dump, when I set all everything on fire for my Thanksgiving. Oh, man. That was some. Monique, do I have electric skillets? Oh my goodness. I have every single utensil or not appliance. I don't need a kitchen. I have an air fryer. I have two electric skillets. I have electric, I have two electric burners. I have a bread maker. I have a toaster oven. I have a crock pot. I have a halogen toaster cooker. I have a grill. What else do I have? I have... I have so many kitchen appliances, it's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start selling them on Facebook because I'm like, I don't need all these things. We didn't even remember how many we had to your unloading cabinets. Yeah. Well, I mean, I remembered I had them, but now that I'm not using them at this house, I, I'll just go ahead and sell them because I'm not using them. So, um, Life with Linda says, I cook in my bathroom, <laughs> bedroom during the kitchen remodel. It's stressful, but don't overthink it because there's more stress. I'm trying not to overthink it right now. There's nothing I can do until the contractor gets here. So I'm just like, you know what? My hands are up and I'm just letting let it go. So Lisa, I absolutely love your channel. I asked for all three of your cookbooks for Christmas. Oh, thanks. Her husband got them for her. I just love them all. Yeah, guys. So we have our Dining Room Dine Cookbook Volume 1. Volume two, totally different recipes in both of these volumes. They go together, but you can use them separately. And then our gluten-free, dairy-free, if you have gluten allergies or dairy allergies, gluten-free, dairy-free edition right here, which is adapted from this edition here. And if you're just going to buy one book, start with this one right here, our volume one. That's the basics of frugal cooking. <clears throat> and how I wrote it was... Amy decision of the Taiwan Gazette said that um, her readers kept wanting her to write a cookbook and she did not want to write a cookbook. She didn't like cooking. She didn't want to do one. And I thought, well, I could do that at the time, 25 years ago, when I came up with the idea, there were no frugal cookbooks out there except for more with less cookbook. That was the only one. And it was all beans. That's why I named my cookbook, not just beans, because that was the only frugal cookbook. And then Dave Ramsey kept going around telling everybody to eat beans and rice. And I was like, you do not have to eat beans to save money on your grocery bill, people. Seriously. <clears throat> I, at the time, was 
only spending $125 a month for four of us. And yeah, my kids were smaller, but still, even back then, that was really good. Most people were spending four to $500 a month. And so um, I was like, you don't have to do this. So basics of frugal cooking, super easy, how to make everything. All right, Mike just popped up a question for me. What was that? Elizabeth says, are you adding space to your kitchen or changing the layout? So we are definitely changing the layout, sort of. We're changing the cabinets. Actually, the refrigerator, sink, and stove are all staying in the same place, but all of the cabinets are going to be moving. And are we adding space? We don't know yet. That's Mike's brilliant idea, actually. And the more I think about it, the more I'm like, I think I would pay $10,000 for Mike's brilliant idea. You think it would cost that much? I think Mike could do Mike's brilliant idea mostly. Well, that's what I'm wondering. If the contractor could just finish the drywall, we could do the rest and save all the money for that. Yeah. Mike's brilliant idea is like my dream. I mean, oh, wow. it is. It's my dream. I keep watching these other YouTubers who have this brilliant idea and I'm like, oh, that would be so glorious. And it never in my wildest dreams actually ever occurred to me until he came up with it. And I was like, oh, oh, I like that idea. <laughs> I love that idea. So we're talking to the contractor on Monday about that. I don't know. Do you think we should do the brilliant idea? I'm trying to envision it, but I think it would be a good idea. Yes. I think it would work. Uh, Joanna asks, what is 50% off? So the 50% off are the ebooks <laughs> e yeah. of the cookbooks and also two other ebook sets. Yeah. The How to Save yeah. Money on Groceries ebooks and yeah. what's the other one? The clean, getting oh, yeah. Guys, clean. we have a whole ebook set on how to save money on groceries. And I, I don't promote this near enough, but it's a whole e course <coughs> on how to save money on groceries. It is a really good e-course. So um, we put it all together in one package for you. You download everything and you keep it forever. There's no expiration date. And so um, our How to Save Money on Grocery e-course is 50% off. And it is a really good course on how to save money on your groceries. I should probably put that course on YouTube. For everybody to see because it is just so stinking good it really is it's just really really good so all right any last questions real quick uh not really just all right. here and there guys we are gonna go take a nap visit us at livingonadime.com check out our new year's sale 35 percent off right now 35 percent off our print books 50 percent off our ebooks thank you so much for joining us and thank you for all the encouragement and everything Follow those links, guys. Visit us at livingonadime.com, and we will see you guys next time.